you're holy 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 and i ask of you god for rain upon tabernacle of joy all of our brothers and sisters those have been gathered god from near and far Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. In Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name. I know that you just were seated, but would you stand again for the reading of the word of the Lord? Where Jesus is, anything can happen. Anything is possible. Nothing shall be impossible to them that believe. There is great faith in this house here tonight, and there is great expectancy. In Matthew chapter 14 and verse 36, Matthew 14 and verse 36. Speaking of Jesus during his earthly ministry, the Bible says this, and besought him that they might only touch the hem of his garment, and as many as touched were made perfectly whole. Say miraculous. If you look in the Gospel of Luke, chapter 5, Jesus had just healed. A leper had cleansed him and gave him instructions to go to the priest and be cleansed according to the laws of Moses. But he did ask the leper not to tell it. But if you look at verse 15 in chapter 5, but so much the more went there a fame abroad of him, and great multitudes came together to hear and to be healed by him of their infirmities. Verse 16, and he withdrew himself into the wilderness and prayed. And it came to pass on a certain day as he was teaching that there were Pharisees and doctors of the law sitting by, which were come out of every town of Galilee and Judea and Jerusalem. Look at this. And the power of the Lord was present to heal them. It's very interesting for me to know, as a student of the Bible, that Jesus healed anyone, anywhere, any place, any time, and you didn't have to be a member in good standing in the temple. He healed publicans, sinners, doctors of the law, the poor, the halt, the maim, the blind, even the priest in the end result. Then if you look... In the Gospel of John, chapter 14, beginning at verse 12, here in John 14 and 12, Jesus begins by saying, saying, verily, verily, which means truly, truly, I say unto you, he that believeth on me, the works that I do, shall he do also. And greater works than these shall he do, because I go unto my Father or the Spirit. In verse 13, and whatsoever ye shall ask in my name, that will I do. I don't know how much you know about law, but that really basically is saying and declaring that we have the power of attorney. God has given us the use of his name 
in his stead or in his place. We have the power of attorney in this world to command in, to speak in the name of Jesus. And he said, I will do it. That the Father or the Spirit may be glorified in the Son or the manifestation of God himself. Would you lift your hands, your voices, and your hearts, and would you pray that God will do with us and you individually exactly what he wants to do here tonight? I pray now, Lord Jesus, for a spirit of revelation and understanding. We have worshipped you. There has been weeping, shouting, trembling, hands lifted, voices lifted. Jesus, we feel the touch of the Master's hand. Now lift us to a level of understanding and revelation that will change the course of our destinies. We give you praise, glory, and honor. We thank you for these things and more. Blessed be the name of Jesus forever. And everyone said, Amen. Thank you for standing so long. You may be seated. Would you clap one more time for the Lord? Would you lift your voice? There is such praise in this house. Worship in this house tonight. Blessed be the name of Jesus forever. You see me as you see me. You know me as you know me through the years that I have come here. But for the first 23 years of my life, it was not always like this. Why am I the way I am? Why am I so bold? Why I, am I so emphatic? Why am I so insistent? And why am I fearless? Something happened. And I simply tonight want to talk to you about the things that have changed me. Would you lift your hands, your voices again, and would you let that come upon you tonight? For there is a urgency in the Holy Ghost to touch you and to change you forever for his great need and burden for the world. I was not raised in apostolic Pentecostalism. I went to a Baptist church as a child. When I became a teenager out on my own in the capital city of the state of Iowa in America, I got involved with Billy Graham to a great extent. I was in Youth for Christ. I was in Campus Crusade. I was a counselor in all of those meetings. I was a very good member in the Evangelical Free Church. But in all of that Christian activity that I was involved in, there was a great need in my life that none of them ever met. In fact, I never even saw it demonstrated among them. When I was 15 years old, I was in a very serious car accident as a passenger in the front seat, and uh, I was not driving. But uh, at noon, a farmer trying to get home, milk, no milk for the baby, and having to go back to the field, he was driving 65 miles an hour through a residential area and did not stop at a stop sign. And we, he was coming so fast we didn't see him. And we were in the middle of the street when his, he hit just broadside right into my door. And it, the impact was terrible because... It knocked me unconscious. I had brain concussion. The impact was so great that it forced the spinal column out of alignment at least an inch to inch and a half from the base of the skull to the, the uh, end of the skull. And I, I can't tell you, because you wouldn't understand the medical terms anyway, but I can't tell you the trauma 
I can't tell you the difficulty I had, sometimes even concentrating. It was, it was awful. I mean, I just, my life was just at an end type thing. And I was only 15. And I struggled like that and hurt. And my, my back and my neck was so bad that by the time I got to be 23 years of age, I was going to a doctor every other day, Monday night, Wednesday night after work, and Friday night. I worked for Rock Island Motor Transit Company. I was a student at Drake University studying commercial art at night, and I would come home from work and have to go to bed. I, I couldn't do anything, and I wanted so much to have a college education. I wanted to do something with my life more than what I had known the way I was raised. So I was working at it, but everything was against me. It got so bad that I, I, couldn't, I couldn't make it from Friday night until Monday without some kind of attention from the doctor. In fact, I went so often, they just gave me a cut rate. They gave me a discount because I was just always coming. And it was a lot of money. <clears throat> but what happened was, someone invited me, perhaps as you were invited or have been invited here tonight, someone invited me to a service like this one. But it was not in a beautiful ballroom like this. It was just in the basement of a pastor's house. They were worshiping there temporarily until they built a new building and bought property, etc., etc. So it was anything but this. It was just depressing. The atmosphere was depressing compared to the beautiful church that I went to. But there in that basement, sitting among maybe 60, 70 people, a lot of them just young people, I saw something I had never seen with 60,000 people in a Billy Graham crusade, with the 2,000 voice choir robed in white singing How Great Thou Art, in that basement in it, under the ministry of an apostolic Pentecostal preacher, which I didn't really understand in those days, I saw something I'd never seen before. People in that service ask for prayer for their bodies and people like you got up and walked down to the front. And that man of God opened a little bottle of oil and went like this on their foreheads and prayed in Jesus' name. I didn't have my eyes closed praying. I was watching because I'd never seen anything like it. They went back to their seats. I took note of how they dressed. I'm a very observing individual. And I could tell they had decent jobs, evidently. They looked intelligent. And then later in the service, they had what they call a testimonial. And people stood. Some of the same people had gone down front and lifted their hands like this. With tears running down their faces, they would stand and say, I want to thank God because God healed my body tonight. That was the most intriguing thing I had ever heard in my entire life of 23 years of age. I never saw anything like it in the Baptist church or the Evangelical Free Church or Billy Graham Crusades or any place else. And when you are desperate people, you don't care what you have to do as long as it works. And I'm here tonight to inform you if you don't know it, this world is desperate. They don't care how you worship. They don't care what you look like. They can feel something and they're looking for what lives inside of you. I thought to myself, I wonder if that would work for me. I didn't know anything about the Holy Ghost. I wasn't baptized in Jesus' name. So the next service I went to, I caught the pastor outside the building. And I said, Reverend Butcher, I want prayer for my body tonight. He said, Mr. Stone King, I, I was just a visitor. They had no idea who I was, knew nothing about me, nothing about the accident or anything else. He said, in his terminology that I already knew, he said, we'd be happy to pray for you here tonight. So I went into the service. We went the outside down a stairway into this basement. And uh, they started 95 miles an hour just going. And I thought they had forgotten me, but I was desperate to, because I was in, had been in pain. It was on a Sunday night. And I raised my hand thinking he had forgotten me. And he just stopped everything like Pentecostals will do and just recognized me. And I said, Reverend Butcher, I want 
prayer for my body tonight. That's what you had said. He said, come right now. Well, my heart began to pound. I wasn't sure what was going to happen. I didn't know what would happen. I went down there, and I stood right in front of him to the left of that pulpit, and he took that bottle of oil. I knew what he was going to do. I couldn't pray the way you people. This was totally foreign to me, but I, got, I did this much. This was major for me right here. I got both hands just like this, and I closed my eyes, and he said, I anoint you with oil and command you to be healed in Jesus' name. And the only thing I said was, I believe. It's all I knew to say, but that's all you have to say. Because if you really believe it, you've got it. You've got it. Oh, hallelujah! I turned and went back to my seat and sat down. And they kept going with the service. But my mind was upon what I had just been through and what I felt. I can't say that I saw a ball of fire. I didn't hear a voice. I didn't see lights. I just felt a peace. And after a while, they took an offering. So when they took the offering, I thought to myself, well, tomorrow night, I will, put, I will have to pay the doctor so much. I should tip God something here tonight for what he's done for me. So I reached in, pulled out my wallet, pulled out exactly what it cost the doctor the next night. And when the offering plate went by, I dropped it in the offering plate. So the service was over, and uh, they did a lot of preaching, gave a long altar call. I didn't go. I was not that far along yet, but I was desperate for a miracle in my life. I went home. Next morning, I got up, went to work. There was no pain in my neck or my shoulders or my back. It was amazing. I didn't go to the doctor that night. Didn't even bother to call. Tuesday came, there was still no pain. Wednesday came, it was like I had a new lease on life. There was still no pain. Thursday came, there wasn't even any stiffness. It was just incredible. Friday came, and the doctor's office called. <laughs> and I answered the phone, and they said, Lee, you've missed all your appointments this week. Are you bed fast? I said, no. No, I'm not bedfast. What's happened to you? Where have you been? I said, I'm not sure you're going to believe this, but I've been to a small church on the east side of Des Moines, Iowa. They are apostolic Pentecostals, and they believe in divine healing. They anoint me with oil for healing and the miraculous. And they anointed me with oil and prayed for me, and I have been divinely healed. He said, we want to see you. They always want to see you. So I went to the office. I told the entire story. Dr. Fuller, he was angry. You could see it in his eyes. He pointed a finger at me. He said, I'll give you one month, boy, and you'll be back to me in worse shape than you were ever in. And I just grinned like I'm doing now, and I said, no, I don't think so. I think this is going to work. It's 43 years later, and it's still working. 43 years later, and it's still working. It changed my life because I said to myself, if there is a God this powerful, if there is a Jesus that still does these things, I will shout this from the housetops. I will tell it everywhere. I'll give my life to this. So I came and got baptized. I got the baptism of the Holy Ghost. And when I got the Holy Ghost, I ran over the next morning, the first thing. I called work, canceled going to work, declared a national holiday for myself because I had the Holy Ghost, got paid for it, stayed home and practiced the Holy Ghost all day. Just spoke with tongues, listened to people sing and worship God. I've never really gotten over that somehow. I'm still just as crazy about it, just as fanatic as I've always been. Don't ever lose that first love. Don't ever lose the tear. Don't ever lose the tremble. Don't ever lose the excitement. So I took off work. I called the people I was buying the home from and renting from at the time, and I said, I, they were members in the Evangelical Free Church, and we did a lot of things together, but they knew I was attending a church like yours. 
They weren't real happy, but you can't do a whole lot if someone wants to do it. So I called and I said, her name was Ethel. I said, Ethel, I got the Holy Ghost last night. Well, well you, know, you know how you are when you're first converted. You don't care about anything. You don't care what you look like, what you act like, what people think. You just tell it. You just do it. But then after you're with us for a while, you become um, what we call more mature. You're not mature. You're backslidden. You've lost the fervor of that first love. I pray to God in this camp meeting, you go back to the place where he first called your name, where you first felt his touch, where he first got a hold of your heart. <clears throat> She said, she said, what? She said, I am so sick. She, she was an aged lady, beautiful white hair. She said, I am so sick. She said, I've got a headache, a migraine. I can't get my head off the pillow. I said, Ethel, I'm coming over. Well, that's what it's like when you just have, I wasn't even 24 hours old in the Holy Ghost. I was about 10 or 12 hours old in the Holy Ghost got about one o'clock in the morning it's about 8 30 now so i ran over to the house in those days we didn't lock doors and i just ran in because i knew the home we ate back and forth together did a lot of things together i went back and there she lay on that bed her head on that pillow she looked awful and i went over she said i am so sick i said ethel listen I have become an apostolic Pentecostal. I've got the baptism of the Holy Ghost. And they've taught me that these signs follow them that believe. I can anoint you with oil and I can lay hands on you and God will heal you. So I said, have you got any oil in the house? When people are desperate, they don't care. She looked at me. Her eyes looked awful. She could hardly get them open. She said, I think there's some Mazzola oil in the kitchen. So I run to the kitchen, and I'm nervous because it's my debut. It's my first anointing, you understand? So I found this big bottle of oil, and I'm nervous. I opened it, and I spilled it. I, 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 I was anointed for the task. Let me tell you, I was anointed. I ran back there and slapped my head on her my hands on her head and I said I command this headache to be gone in the name of Jesus Christ brand new convert I'll never forget it she opened her eyes wide and she looked at me she grabbed her head she said it's gone it's supposed to be gone when you pray in the name of Jesus Christ something I say it again and again and again over and over something is supposed to happen when you pray believing in the name of Jesus Christ something does happen something does happen because there is no name like unto that name there is no power like unto that power there is no healing like unto that healing there is no deliverance like unto that deliverance clap your hands again and shout the accolades to him She was miraculously healed. And I knew I had a hold of something. I knew as a 23-year-old young man, something had a hold of me. I had a hold of something powerful. And it changed my life forever. My pastor and his wife took me to general conference within two weeks after I had received the baptism of the Holy Ghost. I'd never been to a general conference before. Never saw that larger group of people worshiping the way you worship. And the last night, it was programmed and announced that a man whose name was T.W. Barnes would be preaching the last night's service. I knew nothing about him. I was a brand new convert in apostolic Pentecostalism among you. So we went. I'll never forget it. I've never seen anything like it before nor since. When the worship was ended and they introduced him, the T.W. Barnes came and stepped in the pulpit. Didn't say one word. He stepped in the pulpit. When he did... 
people in the audience jumped up screaming and began to spin in between the knees of people and the backs of the seats in front of them and spun in circles and fell in a carpeted aisle, fell on their faces, crying out, screaming, some of them, receiving the baptism of the Holy Ghost for the first time and being miraculously healed. I never saw anything like it in my life. And I said to Brother Sister Butcher, I want to meet him. They said, we'll wait. We'll wait for you. The very end of the service, when people had stood in line to meet him, I was in that line. At the very end, I waited. I'll never forget it. I walked up those steps. And the moment I began to walk up those steps, he stopped talking to the preacher he was talking to and just stood there and watched me. I walked straight to him and extended my hand. And I said, Brother Barnes, I just want to meet you. I want to do what you're doing. He never forgot me. And we were friends for 43 years until this year. He passed in April. But changed my life forever. You can talk about magic. You can talk about theater. You can talk about sports. You can talk about Olympics. You can talk about intellectual achievements. You can talk about rhetoric. You can talk about drama. But when you have a hold of the power of the creator, that when you step into a pulpit, People, diseases depart from people's bodies, limbs straighten, cancer disappears. There is no power like it. There is no story like it. There is no, no event that can even compare. Nothing compares with the touch of the master's hand and the sound of his voice. The creator who caused the thunder today, who caused the lightning today, and the rain, as the rain poured this afternoon, I just basically whispered in my heart and soul, Lord Jesus, let the Holy Ghost fall this week like this rain is falling upon this area. And I can feel rain in this place. I could feel it the moment you begin to worship. I could feel it when you were exhorting. I could feel it coming from all of you people. There's a rain falling upon us in this place. Lift your hands into that realm and just simply worship the Lord for a moment. Hallelujah, Jesus. I dropped everything. I checked out of the university. I went off to Bible school right away. People thought I was crazy. But I went off to Bible school. And I remember I taught personal evangelism when I was in Bible college. Students would come on Sunday afternoon We'd have incredible moves of God. We'd go out and wade the snow in sub-zero temperatures and witness to people. And the Sunday night service, that old Midway Tabernacle, the Holy Ghost would fall and things would happen. Basically, God just tore everything up. And that's what he's wanting you to do here in your lives in this place. <clears throat> so it so happened that that first Christmas... I really couldn't afford to go home for Christmas. I really couldn't. I was working my way through school. So I decided I will just stay here in St. Paul and I will just have my own personal Christmas with Jesus. And what I'll do is I will fast three days and nights without food or water and I will end it Christmas day night. I will give that as a gift to this Jesus whose birthday we celebrate. And so I started. I weigh about 199 pounds now. I weighed 145 then. So fasting three days without food and water was very difficult for me. I remember I had my own little apartment complex off the campus. And it wasn't fancy. It was just 
I was cold. It was cold outside. And I would, I would get so thirsty for something to drink, for water. I'm not recommending that you fast three days and three nights without food or water, but I did it, as Esther did of old. But I would go to that little faucet in the kitchen, and I would turn it on and watch the water run, and hot tears would just run down my face. I wanted that water so badly, but I wouldn't drink it. But the third day, I would... I went in and just watched the water run. And I had prayed. I got so weak I would just lay down and pray. I did put the water in my mouth and rinse my mouth out and then spit it out. I didn't break it until that night, Christmas Day night. You know, people, when you're hungry, bread and water is a banquet. When you're starving, people who are starving don't have manners. If you're really hungry for God, if you really love Jesus, you don't get involved with all the nonsense that people go through. You just come and worship him with all of your heart, like a hungry man, like a hungry woman. You just get into God. You want to eat at his banquet table. You want to just scoop it up. You don't care how many pieces of silverware, chopsticks or none. You just take your hands and go after it. And I tell you tonight, if you will go after it with your hands, so to speak, and just pull him down, just pull him down into your life, something marvelous will happen for you. Hallelujah! Try it for just a moment. Just throw your hands in the air and just, as it were, go after the Spirit of God. For he said, I am the bread of life. I am the water of life. He that drinketh this water shall never thirst again. He that eateth this bread of life shall never hunger again. Oh. Jesus. It was something. It changed my life. Those three days and nights changed my life forever. The vacation was over. The students came back. The first Sunday afternoon, when the students gathered for my personal evangelism class, we had a move of God. It was snowing. It was very cold. But they were going to go out and canvas in the snow. And so I began teaching them about soul winning, as I did in those days. And um, we had a move of God in that place. What happened was, all of a sudden, with a move of God, there was a, a girl, one of the students in the school, came, just stepped out and came right up front. She said, Brother Stone King, I've only come back to school to pack my bags. I'm going to have to have a very serious surgery. I've only come back to just get my things. I have to leave immediately and go back to the hospital for surgery. She said, would you pray for me for healing? I said, yes, I will. I said, just kneel down right here. She knelt down right there. I took this hand and put this hand on her head while the other students gathered around and lifted their hands in worship and prayed that she would be healed in Jesus' name. She was actually shaking with the presence of God and weeping and crying. She got up and stepped back, and we just continued to worship. All of a sudden, she ran out of there. Well, you never know why people run out. So I just kept worshiping and working with the students. In about 10 or 15 minutes, she came running back in to that room, and she was sobbing, and she was speaking with tongues, and she had to try to speak in English. She said, Brother Stone King, I've gone to the ladies' room. She said, students, I've checked everything. There's nothing there. It's all gone. She did not have to go home. I'm a brand new convert. I don't have a license. I don't have a license to preach, but I've got the Spirit of God. I've got a name above every name. Some people want all kinds of recognition. Let me tell you how to get it. Do the work of God. Lay your hands on them and let them become healed. People will know who you are. 
A degree does not make you a preacher. A certificate does not make you a preacher. The thing that makes you a preacher is a divine call from God, a working knowledge of the scriptures, the anointing of God. And if you get results, there's nothing anybody can do with you. Why don't you get involved now? Don't wait to be drafted. Just enlist. Get in. If you enlist, the fringe benefits are so much better. Tap your hands again. I want to shout the praises of God in this house tonight. It was incredible. When that happened, a boy stepped forward. He said, Brother Stone King, could I stand in for my little sister? He said, she's in the hospital in tubes and wires. He said, they have no idea what's wrong with her. He said, my parents are just upside down. Could I step in for her, stand in her place? I said, yes, you can. He came and stood. I laid hands on him and prayed for him as if it were his sister in Jesus' name. And then after the worship settled, we went out and waited the snow and knocked on doors and invited people to come to church. That night at Old Midway Tabernacle, when the, before the service started, we got there and that boy spotted me and he came running. He grabbed me in front of everyone. He said, Brother Stone King, I called my father when I got home today from the canvassing. He said, something has happened. He said, the hospital called my father and mother and said, something has happened. He said, when, when, when you, when you prayed for me, I checked the time. He said, the power of God hit my sister. She broke the tubes and the wires, jumped out of the bed conscious, and was dancing in the spirit, speaking with tongues, when the doctors and nurses came running in, and they released her from the hospital. That's the kind of power I've got a hold of. That's the kind of power that you've got a hold of. That's the kind of power that you've got a hold of. It's not just me. If you've got the baptism of the Holy Ghost, You've got that kind of power. If you ever wake up as to who you really are, there will become an aggressiveness in you that will not back down for any devil or combination of devils because you will stand up and scream from the housetops, Greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. And his name is Jesus. That's it. Let your voice out and just worship the Lord for he is great and he is greatly to be praised. Of this kingdom there shall never be an end. Blessed be the name of Jesus forever. Oh, it changed me. The power of God kept moving and rising in my life. I graduated from Bible school. I went to the East Coast, began pastoring a small church on Webster Street. I did canvassing. I walked the streets. We did all kinds of things. Had tent revivals. But in all of this I was doing, there was a large growth that began to grow right here on my neck. First looked like just a simple mole, but it kept growing. And... Uh, that's a dangerous sign uh, as far as medical science is concerned. And so, you know, wearing a, a white shirt and a collar at the end of the day, especially in the summer, I'd, c I'd come in in the evening and take the shirt off and it would just be inflamed, it'd be red because of the collar. And I would look at it, it was just getting larger and larger. One night I came in and uh, opened the collar and it was just ugly. I took these three fingers of my right hand and I laid them on that growth. And I just looked in the mirror and looked right at the growth and my fingers. And I said, I curse you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Next morning when I got up, I stumbled in the bathroom and looked in the mirror. And it had dried up in the night. It was so amazing. I took those same three fingers just to touch it, and it fell off in my hand. The things that have changed me, these are the things that have made me what I am. The aggressiveness, the fearlessness, the positiveness. Because people, if you've ever seen it, 
Nobody can take that away from you. It doesn't matter what the scoffers nor the mockers say nor anyone else. If you've experienced it and you've seen it, you've got it and it doesn't make any difference. No one can shake your faith. God is speaking to a number of you here tonight. God is wanting some of you to become unconditionally surrendered to him. And if you become available to him, he will suddenly begin to do the impossible and the miraculous for you. People, it's not in intellect. It's not in education. It's not in wealth. It is. All those things are important. I'm glad I've got a few dollars. I'm glad I've got education. But where it is at the end of the age is in the demonstration of the Spirit of God in power. And angels are not coming to demonstrate it. It's in your hands and it's in my hands. We are that generation that has been brought on the scene to the kingdom for such a time as this. Let your voice out for a moment and don't worry that your neighbor hears what you're saying. Oh, I continued. I was so excited. I was so excited. We pitched tents in the area. We had a home missionary church. We didn't have money. The tent was very old, had rips in it and all that. It was just pitiful. But we went to a lot in a Roman Catholic area where there were seven Catholic churches on that, in that particular neighborhood. And right in the middle of it, we took a lawnmower, a power mower, and mowed everything off and chopped out the brush and pitched this tent and advertised a tent revival. You cannot know the uproar we caused in that city. They came from everywhere. They tried to set fire to the tent, but thank God it was fireproof. They did all kinds of things. And one night, some ruffian outside, uh, you know, he came with a, two or three of his thug friends, and he made his, you know, his declaration. He was going to come in and just mop the floor with me. He was just going to come in and wipe me out. Well, unknown to him, I'm not alone. I may look like I'm alone, but I'm not alone. The angel of the Lord encampeth round about them that fear him. I'll never forget, most of the crowd had left. He came stomping down that grass aisle among those folding chairs, headed straight for me. He, I just stood my ground on the pulpit. I just stood there and looked right into his face. And I knew in the spirit he was coming with evil intent. I looked right in his face. He got right to the end of that front row. And his eyes got wide. I'm not exaggerating. His hands began to go like this. His knees began to shake. He turned while his friends were watching from the, from the door of the tent, he turned and ran straight through them out into the night and was gone. We found out later that when he got there, he saw an angel in white and fire standing just to the right of me, behind me. It scared him so badly, he ran out of there. So when someone comes towards you, just remember that angel is standing there. Lord, if you rebuke in the name of Jesus, that fire will demonstrate itself. That angel will come forth in that same tent revival. A bunch of high school kids came from the local high school and they had these little boxes. They called them laughing boxes. And they can turn them on and there's laughter all over there. Try to preach and keep your thoughts straight with these little boxes laughing all over the congregation. But somehow or other, I kept it together. And the ringleader of this group was right on the front row over here. And he was standing there. He was the most popular kid in the high school. He was standing there. And he had one of these boxes. And he was the ringleader of this whole thing. And all of a sudden, I looked at him. And his face, there were tears in his eyes. And I'm thinking... This is a miracle. He stood to his feet and came before the service was ever ended. I stopped preaching. Came straight down to the altar area we had built and knelt in that, that sawdust and began to sob on that platform. You talk about tearing up his friends. They didn't know what to do with him. They didn't know what to think. 
I knelt down beside him and slipped an arm around his shoulders and began to pray with him. And he looked up at me and he opened his eyes. I mean, tear, tearfully. He said, Brother Stone King, I'm so sorry that I've done what I've done. He said, but while you were preaching, he said, out of that platform, he said, there was a lighthouse that just rose up. And he said, the top of it began to spin. And he said, the light turned and the, the beam of light shined straight on me and he said I knew that this Jesus you were preaching was reaching for me we took him to the church and baptized him in Jesus name that night those things have changed my life forever I know about the power of God I'm not interested in Asian power communist power this power that power there is a power that supersedes all of them it is the power of the Holy Ghost this Jesus can bring kingdoms down he can cause walls to sink into the earth he can cause manna to fall from heaven he can discomfit enemies he can send a storm and wipe out everything and when these hurricanes and these tornadoes it's just the breath from his nostrils in anger against the wickedness of this world oh what a savior oh what a god oh what might oh what power and we know him. Is it any wonder then we come to church like this unapologetically, unashamedly, and clap our hands and shout and worship God? <laughs> Hallelujah! Mm. And then, while I was pastoring, a couple of my church, their little niece was playing in a little plastic swimming pool in the yard behind the house where they lived. And the mother was watching from the window above the sink. It was just a little round thing. She was, not, she was only about two years old, one and a half, two years old. Just a little plastic thing, maybe water this deep. The mother got busy doing something and she felt the child was safe. And the next time she looked out, <clears throat> the little girl was lying face down in the water, motionless. She screamed. She ran out. But the child was basically just lifeless. They called the ambulance, the paramedics. They took the child to the hospital. The child was not dead, but there was severe damage. And the child's eyes were just rolling in her head. They were just rolling wildly. And so this couple called me and they said, Brother Stone King, would you please go to the hospital and pray? I said, yes, I will. I said, let's go right now. I said, can you go with me? They said, yes, we'd like to go. We wanted to go. I said, well, meet me there. And we went to St. <coughs> uh, it was actually St. Peter's Hospital and uh, Ellis Hospital there in Schenectady. And I asked the nurse, I said, where is the child? It was his intensive care. I said, well, I'm a man of God and I've come to pray. You know how they just scorn you, you know. But I hold my ground. And so, I'll never forget it. We walked to the door. And the child was the only child in that room. She was so bad. When I walked to the door and looked in, <clears throat> They had that child strapped with sheets that they had folded, the arms, the torso, the legs. I mean, they were just hardly, she was just totally strapped in. And the head was going like this, and the eyes were just rolling. You could see it even in the doorway. So I stood there, <clears throat> and there was a chorus that I used to sing all the time when I pastored. And the chorus simply says, The healer's coming down the road. The healer's coming down the road. Jesus is coming down the road. He can save and he can heal. Just tell him what you need. Jesus is coming down the road. The healer's coming down the road. And I was walking, 
by the time I got to the bedside and began to sing it the second time, I looked into the face of the child. The head had stopped convulsing and the eyes had stopped rolling and the child was released from the hospital the next morning. The healer's coming down the road. The healer's coming down the road. Jesus is coming down the road. He can save and he can heal. Just tell him what you need. Jesus is coming down the road. The healer's coming down the road. The healer's coming down the road. Jesus is coming down the road. He can say and he can heal. Just tell him what you need. Jesus is coming down the road. Jesus is coming down the road of someone's life here tonight. Jesus is coming down the road of several lives here tonight. Just tell him what you need. Just tell him what you need. He can save, he can heal. Jesus is coming down the road of your life. Lift your hands if I'm talking to you. Let your voice out in this place tonight. That's it, Timothy. Something wonderful is coming to you. Something wonderful is coming to you. Something wonderful is upon you. Blessed, blessed be the name of Jesus. Something wonderful is reaffirmed upon your life, Brother Corbin. Something wonderful is upon you, Sister Corbin. Something wonderful is upon you, son. That's Jesus you feel, boy. That's him. He's greater than anything this world has to offer. He is greater, 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 greater than anything this world has to offer. Mm. Jesus, 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 Jesus. Oh. Let your voice out. Healing has walked into this place. There is a very unusual an anointing for great deliverance emotional deliverance right now swirling around many people here yes yes I don't have to go any farther than this. Jesus is in this house. Jesus is in this room. Let your voice out. I pray right now that you will never be the same. I'm praying that right now, this touch of God that is upon your life, that you will never be the same again. That's it. That's it. That's it. That's it. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. There's a door opening for you. There's a door opening for you. There's a door opening for you. Hallelujah, Jesus. 
receive it receive it see the door clearly walk through in your heart walk through in your spirit that's it that's it that's it that's it such as i have such as i have in the name of jesus of Nazareth. receive it receive it that's it it's on you man it's on you it's on you right there in the name of jesus you are rejoicing for others in your spirit you are rejoicing for others that are being set free and delivered so i should put you in a place where you are free to do it in the name of jesus of nazareth in the name of jesus of nazareth in the name of jesus of nazareth hallelujah 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 that's it let your voice out let your voice out in the name of Jesus of Nazareth, such as I have, such as I have, in the name of Jesus, by the authority of the word of God, by the power of the name of Jesus, in 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 the name of Jesus, Hey, Shalene, may you never be the same, never to be the same, in the name of Jesus, 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 the Spirit of the Lord is upon you for good, and the blessing of the Lord is upon you, because He has seen, He has seen the greatness of your heart he has seen health to you health to you in the name of jesus healing in the name of jesus forever the strength of the lord the strength of the lord in the name of jesus 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 whatsoever you shall ask in my name that will i do i encourage you to ask right now ask right now in the name of jesus and it will happen it will happen for you in the name of jesus in the name of jesus yes in the name of jesus yes in the name of jesus that's it megan such as i have such as i have in the name of jesus of nazareth the rich anointing the rich anointing the rich anointing the power of it all in the name of jesus Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. I, I would encourage you right now, there is great anointing upon all of you as I walk up and down the aisles, in and around through you. There's great anointing upon you. So you're in a position right now to transmit. You're in a position right now. You're in a position to, to give of the Spirit of God. You're in a position to transmit. If you will lay hands upon others, if you will pray the prayer of faith for others, miracles will happen here. Miracles will happen here in the name of Jesus. 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 In the name of Jesus.